When you have a contract to work on a construction project, you want it to be as fair as possible. The best way to be able to get a fair contract is to qualify your bid. Condition it on the use of language that you like. There's a number of ways you can do that. The first way is to call out specific contract terms that you demand are going to be in your contract. That's a little pushy. One of the other ways you can do it, which will actually benefit you even more, is to call out a specific document. And you can require that you use an AIA, American Institute of Architects, A401. That's a pretty good document, relatively fair and balanced. A consensus doc 750, those are both the contracts between the contractor and the subcontractor. Or you can identify additional documents that you can use such as the American Subcontractors Association Addendum to Subcontract. All fine documents to call out. Now, you're probably not going to get each and every one of the contract terms that you're requiring, but that's okay because you have a different advantage now. The problem comes if all you have done is given a bid that says, I can perform this labor, supply this material for this amount of money. When you do that, the courts across the country, especially in Ohio, have provided that the contractor can give you any contract term that's common in the construction industry. So did you mean to have a pay if paid clause? Did you mean to have a no lien clause? Well, all of those can show up if you didn't qualify them out. The other thing you can use is rather than using your own bid form, the American Subcontractors Association, the National Association, at its website, asaonline.com, offers the ASA bid document for free. In the upper left-hand corner, there's a blue box that says Download Free Document. That's the one you get. Download it, use it, it has two pieces to it. The first part is your bid. The second part is your terms and conditions which include not only the consensus doc 750, but also include some of the other more balancing terms that balance it more in your favor. It's a fine document to use and it's free, so you might as well. So once you have bid, the normal way that you see your contract being accepted, your bid being accepted, is to have a contract sent to you with the congratulations that you're the successful bidder and you're expected to sign and return that document by many contractors. In fact, some contract documents will say right on the top, do not make any marks on this contract. If you have a Sharpie, cross that one out. Go right ahead, make changes that you want to to that document and return it or call them and say, this isn't the document we agreed to. This isn't the document that I bid to. I bid to using the consensus doc 750 to including the AIA A401 or including one other document, the American Subcontractors Association Addendum to Subcontract. It's a very fine document that we on the Attorney's Council for ASA prepared. We change it all the time, adding new contract clauses every time we see another one that's bad and hurts you. Use the document. Use the document for negotiation. Remember, just because you put something in your bid doesn't mean it's in your contract because they have given you a counteroffer. You have provided your offer in the form of a bid. They've given you a counteroffer. Your bid is no longer there. So all you're left with is the document that you're ready to accept. Ready to accept means are you going to sign it? If you didn't qualify your bid at all, now they can hold you to the terms they want to hold you to. If you qualified your bid, now you have three choices. Choice number one, negotiate a fair contract. Choice number two, it's close enough and I really want the job. I'm going to accept this contract as it's given to me. Choice number three, walk away. You don't have to take a job that is going to put a different burden on you than you wanted to have in your contract. And when I say want, I of course mean qualified in writing. Now, before you run off willy-nilly and just say, I'm walking away from this contract, be sure you talk to your construction lawyer first to make sure that you have the right to do that. 
There's some good case law in Ohio that lets you walk away. The primary one that we see is complete general construction versus card. Card bid to complete. Card decided it didn't want the contract when they hadn't met all its conditions. And Card walked away. Of course, what Complete did is they went out, hired a replacement contractor, got the bill for the replacement contractor, and to the extent that it exceeded Card's bid, sued Card for the difference. That's their remedy. Fortunately, Card had the defense of, but you didn't give me the contract I asked for. Because they'd set themselves up correctly, they had the right to walk away. The downside, they had to get all the way to the Court of Appeals to prove it. That's a very expensive proposition. So be sure you're doing it right. Talk to your construction law attorney to be sure that you're going to be able to walk away and not have to suffer the consequences of a frivolous lawsuit against you.